So I'm Bishra from Turkey, but currently I work at Ericsson in, uh, in Budapest, Hungary, and R&D Center uh, as a cloud system developer. And currently I work with OpenStack, uh, Ansible, and Python programming. And today I'm going to talk about how to automate, uh, how to automate big tasks uh, with Ansible in the cloud. So let's have a look at our outline and what we are going to I'm going to talk about today and what we are going to discuss. First of all, I would like to talk about the automation, uh, the idea of automation and which kind of automation tools we are using in IT. And then we are going to focus on Ansible. Uh, Rodolf is already asked, but I would like to ask that how many of you have heard about Ansible or experienced Ansible? Wow, that's a good number. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to focus on Ansible and how it works. Then I'm going to share with you what I did so far with Ansible and I how I experimented. And I'm will going to share a demo with you that uh, how I did my case study. And at the end, I will summarize what we have seen and I will take the questions if you have any. And the automation or <laughs> automatic controls are some tools uh, with minimum or reduced human intervention. So we always need some robots to do our jobs because there are always some tasks that they repeat themselves and uh, we want them to be automated somehow. And but why do we use or why do we use automation in IT? Because we deploy machines, we install applications and we want to configure them in a way that they can work together. And now we use automation tools in, in our profession in, in IT. There are some automation tools, as you see here. This, this is a historical order, and these are some of them. CF Engine is the first one, then the Puppet, Chef, and Ansible is following. And these are the most uh, common ones. So as you see, that CF Engine is the quite a long time ago, 1993. And I can actually say that I'm nearly the same age as the CF Engine. So Mark uh, Berger, who is author of CF Engine, saw this needs. Uh, in a very early times, and he was just a PhD student at times, and he he needed to deploy Unix work workstations and install application and scripts. And I can say I totally understand him. When I was a uh, when I was a student and trying to do my uh, thesis work, and I installed Hadoop by hand, and I I had the same difficulties. I was doing everything by hand, and I saw how hard it is. I struggled a lot. But uh, when I met with Ansible at my workplace at Ericsson, we use Ansible, and um, I saw how it is easy to do it. So I tried some uh, hobby project with Ansible, and I'm, I'm trying to share with you today. Oh, you can ask why Ansible. So, so far, actually, I only uh, experienced with Ansible, so we are I'm not going to compare any other automation tools. So we are going to focus on Ansible. First of all, it's written in Python. So maybe that's why it is really easy to get started and learn. It uses YAML files. Um, so even though you don't have any idea about the tool, but yeah, you can read the YAML files because these are human-friendly data serialization files, uh, standards. So you can easily read the file and you can understand what actually this task, task, task does. And uh, this is one thing is very clean architecture. Um, also, it's so easy to get started, so you don't really need to uh, read long documentation uh, to be able to write your own small Ansible project. It's really easy to get started and learn. And I think this is a great motivation, uh, because every time uh, when I start to learn something new, and if I create something very small that works, and I can see it is working and it's alive, and uh, it gives me a lot of motivation, and I love that. So it is one of the good things about Ansible. Uh, it has a modular structure, uh, which means that you can write your own module, your functions, your, your own module in any language that can return JSON. So whenever you need something, something, if you think that Ansible does not have this module, and you can write your own module in any language uh, that can return JSON, and it's a great freedom. Uh, but Ansible comes with the batteries, so we can say its battery is included. So it already comes with a huge amount of uh, libraries of modules. So I will suggest you to look at first whether Ansible has this module or not, then you can create your own one. Own one. 
And also it is supported with a very big community and the they have mailing lists and the but it's already you can find so many questions in Stack Overflow as well. It also helps me a lot, but its documentation is also good, so you can uh, even read its own documentation in the website. And Ansible itself is an open source project. It's on GitHub. You can even contribute uh, Ansible. So as far as I know now, it has a uh, contribution from 1,000 users uh, from over all over the world. So how Ansible works? Uh, first of all, Ansible works over the SSH connection. And this is the most important thing about Ansible. It makes it so easy because uh, you don't need any, ad any additional applications on the other side. You just need a uh, SSH connection or and also you all need uh, just Python installed on the remote side, on the other servers. This is all you need. And you have your inventory file, and this is where you write your uh, host, uh, no host information. So if you want to run three servers and you need to put their IP addresses and which kind of users you want to run, you want Ansible to run on these nodes. So inventory file should contain this, uh, this information. It's most of the time it is a, it's a file, but there are some other options like uh, dynamic inventory and so on. Uh, you can check them. Ansible runs playbooks, so it says it, it runs playbooks, and these playbooks are represented by tasks, and tasks are represented by modules. But you will see the big picture when we are looking into the director structure, and I'm sure you will see it better when we are going through the demo. For example, this is uh, just an example of Ansible project. You can see the tree here. Um, I have my Ansible config file. You can have your own one, but it is, it is as default under etc, etc Ansible, but you can have your own uh, configuration file in your project directory. You have your host file. You can see the screenshot of it here, cat host. And I can write here my host name, for example, web, uh, my web servers and my Git servers and their IPs. And the great thing is that you can group your servers because I'm sure there will be some tasks that you want them to be run on your Git servers, on your web servers. So you want, you want some, at some point, you want them to be separated. That's why it's so good if you can have this group by with your server names. And the site YAML here, it's your main playbook. It's your playbook that you map your host to the roles. So here, for example, I write host is all, so I want to run my role in the all on the all nodes. So I can write them, for example, web servers with the web server tag, or, or, or I can also write them git servers. So we only write here just the role name common, but this role name common has some subdirectories, as you see here. Um, it has some default uh, task. In the task subdirectory is your most important one. So here you need to write your module, what you want to write. For example, you can install, it, uh, install a library on your machine, on your server. So you need to uh, write them into this main YAML. As you see, these are ha some of them has main YAML file, but you can have uh, any, any kind of other uh, files, but you need to include them into your y main main file because, as you see here, SiteYaml, we only call the role name common. So when you run this common, it is going to include all the main YAML files and it will run your task. So what I did with Ansible and what I'm going to share with you today, um, we are going to create the servers in the cloud. Then we are going to install Hadoop on them. We are going to have three servers. So they are going to be a cluster with three servers. And we will run a big data job on this cluster. And after the collecting results, uh, we are going to destroy the environment. And all this thing is going to be run as an Ansible project. So we are just going to press a button, and it will deploy the servers, uh, install the Hadoop, run the job, collect the results. And at the end, and we are done. We, need, we can destroy the environment. As a cloud system provider, I use DigitalOcean. So this is where I create my servers. 
And uh, maybe I need to say some words about Hadoop. Uh, probably you, maybe you might hear about it. Hadoop is a MapReduce framework. It is used in big data, big data area. So it's a MapReduce framework that it allows you to make your task distributed. So if you have a cluster, let's say like 50 servers, you can have this Hadoop framework and you can run your job is, as distributed. So it will handle your task. Uh, in a distributed way. Uh, so when I was a student, as I already said, that I tried this Hadoop as my for my thesis work, and I did everything by hand. And after meeting the Ansible, I just tried this. It was the first thing that I tried on my own. Um, that's why I wanted to share with you today. And the, as a big data job, uh, we are going to run a word count. It is kind of like hel hello world in the big data area. So it we will we will give a big text file and it is going to count the words how many times and how many times which word is repeated. So we are going to see this as an output. This is how my project uh, look, looks. So I have my own Ansible config file, as you see here. And um, I have two different uh, playbooks. One of them is uh, deploy cluster and the second one is destroy cluster. So when I run my Ansible project, first I run deploy cluster, and it runs two different roles. One of them is creating cluster. This is where I create my servers in the cloud. And the second one is install Hadoop. That's why I have two different roles, because when you see the deploy cluster in a moment, you will see why I uh, make them separately. And I have some tasks. Uh, in the create cluster and its own variables in, into, into it. And uh, install Hadoop also has its own subdirectories, its own tasks, and its own variables. Um, this is my host file. Before uh, I run my Hadoop installation, I need to create the servers in the cloud. So after creation, I, I write this host file with my created servers IPs. So I have three servers, master, slave one, and slave two. So I need to write them here with the IPs, and then I group them as master and slaves, because there are some tasks that I want, uh, I want them to be run only on master, and there are some tasks that I want them to be run on only slaves. That's why I use this uh, grouping. And this is my deploy cluster. As I said, that I first run Ansible with the deploy cluster YAML file. And what it does is uh, creating, the, uh, creating servers in the cloud first. So here, as you see, it, is the, it runs on my local, because DigitalOcean uh, has an API. And after Ansible 2.0 release, now it has DigitalOcean module as a core module. So when you run, when you install the Ansible, you have this DigitalOcean module inside. So, and then I need to run this on my local computer because my local computer need to talk to DigitalOcean API. I need to uh, create the servers uh, into, into my account. That's why the connection and host is localhost. And you don't need to write this localhost in your host INI file. And the second one is after the creation, the Hadoop, I need to run this Hadoop installation. After creation, the droplets, the servers, I need to install this Hadoop on my created servers. So that's why I need to run them on the masters and the on the slaves. Here, I need to map my uh, host. And I can also write here all, but when you write all, it also includes the local host, uh, because I, but I don't want it to be installed. Hadoop on my local host, that's why it, you need to write here only master and slaves. And I just, I just wanted to highlight some parts in my Ansible project. For example, this is the creation of the servers, how I create and what I use in the Ansible. This is, a, this is a one example of module. And you can write name, any kind of name. I say droplets because this, this is DigitalOcean terminology. Actually, it, they use droplets for the servers. So whenever I say droplets, actually, I'm meaning uh, servers or in the cloud. So DigitalOcean is my module name. And it, you, can, you can think that DigitalOcean, this name is kind of function. And it has some keys that you need to pass on this function. So state 
command SSH keys name API token size im, uh, region and image these are my parameters that I need to pass um, so here one important thing is this state one most of the modules has this state parameter when you write here present uh, it is going to it means Ansible understand that this is a creation so it will check that if they are not present it is going to create these uh, servers so and then I can put my SSH keys and I can I need to put my a API token because I will talk to API DigitalOcean API and then this with items it's I want to run this three times so I can give a list and it can uh, run this module three times this is another things about Ansible. This is how I created servers. And for Hadoop configuration, after the creation of these uh, servers, I needed to install some Java libraries, then I need to download Hadoop on my servers. And these are all Ansible modules. Ansible has uh, apt get module, Ansible has some file module. But mostly I used for the Hadoop configuration was the template module. So it allows you to create fi a file uh, in a way that you want it to be created. So you can create a you can create a template of file and you can put your own variable that you use in the Ansible project. And here, for example, is my example. I need to I want I have a variable name Hadoop Master and I want it to be created in this uh, in this IP number. So when Ansible, when I call the Ansible module with template, I need to source this uh, XML file, which is this one. And the destination is where I want to create this file on my remote servers. And when I run this uh, module, it is going to create this file and changing this Hadoop master as an IP. And it is going to be created on my remote side. So for Hadoop configuration, there are many configuration files that I wanted to edit. So I use template module to create them in a way that I really wanted to be. And this is another thing. If I wa if you need to say yes at some point, because there are some commands, as you know, that you they ask you some question in the middle of the uh, execution. So they ask sometimes, do you want to continue or do you want to re-over it, and so on. So when you are using automation tool, you need to say yes, or you need to give some answer, and your automation tool should handle this. So I used uh, expect module for it. So you can write here your expect module, and the command is whatever you want to run on the other side. And this command needs some uh, answers. So you can write here, uh, this reformat can be anything. Uh, I, want, I want to have this yes or why as an answer, but the most imp the good thing about it that you can give a list here. So if your uh, command asks you like three times a question, so you can give here three different answers, and Ansible will run them as Ansible will ans answer this question as you wanted. And but the this expect is not a core module, so it's a it's an additional library. So you need to have this expect uh, pub, uh, Python module on your remote servers installed. But it helps me a lot. It made me life made my life a lot easier. And how I, how I destroy them? This is the same function, same module I use for Digital Ocean. And one thing uh, about it, the state is absent now. It means that it is going to be delayed, uh, deleting. So if it checks that if they are not absent, they will delete. Ansible will delete these uh, servers. If it is not, it is going to say us, uh, it is OK. I don't need to delete them. So this is the same API and the same uh, call, but you just need to change this parameter state as an absent if you want to delete something. So as a demo, actually, it takes all these things takes like 15 minutes. So that's why I only uh, I made a video for you just to see like how Ansible, when I run Ansible, how it looks. And my modules, um, you can see it here. So when I write my deploy cluster, it is going to deploy these three uh, create droplets. Use as you see that three times it runs. Then I I add them to my host file. At the end, I create some SSH keys because after the creation of my servers, I need to do some SSH uh, connection because they need to be talking to each other. Um, 
after so I and then I need some libraries uh, for the Hadoop for it runs with the Java so I can install Java with uh, Ansible module this is where I install uh, Java libraries and some necessary libraries for example Python pip and also expect module I can install this expect module with the Ansible as well before I use it so this is another thing so I download Hadoop and uh, uh, I after downloading, I un unarchive Hadoop. These are also Ansible, play, uh, Ansible modules. Everything you see here as task, these are all uh, modules. So these are each uh, different modules that I use. But I can give them a name, so they can run. They can give me some uh, useful information. So the other things are config. For example, this is where I'm uh, creating config files this with the, this template module. Um, and then I can create some directories. Ansible also have a file module for creating directories. This is where I use this one. Um, then I need to run, I need to start the Yodo, uh, Hadoop and Ansible has a command uh, module so you can run any shell command with it. And as a big data job, I need to put my uh, text file and the other things into the Hadoop. Then after the run, I can check my um, my master output. As you see here, after the run the job, and um, it checks that uh, this is the output of my job, my big data job. So it check the it checks the words how many times they are repeated. And yeah, so now we can destroy with our another YAML file, which is the destroy one, and it's just a couple of seconds. It can be destroyed. And that's it. <laughs> so let's see what we have seen so far. This is my story. Um, first of all, the Ansible is really, really easy to get started, just like Python. Of course, you need to improve it, but this is a great motivation if you can start immediately whenever you learn something new. So. This is great motivation. And it has a clean architecture. Uh, it uses YAML files, and you also see the director structure. It is really easy to get, because whenever your project gets bigger and bigger, bigger, and it is going to be easy to organize it, and it is going to be easy to, ha easy to handle it. And it has a straightforward configuration. As you see, that we don't need any kind of additional application on the other side. We don't need any agent. We only need SSH. Uh, connection and just the uh, Python installed on the other side. And it has an ext extendable module structure, so you can write your own module, your own function in any language that can return JSON. This is another great thing and it gives you a lot of freedom if you want to create something in your way, if you want to create something quite new and s quite specific. And at the end, it of course allows you to make your complex tags quite easy. Actually, it helps me a lot. Now I can just press a button and I can uh, deploy machines in the cloud. I can install Hadoop and the, my Hadoop is ready. I can use it. Um, the, my project itself, it is on GitHub. So you only need to change your SSH keys and your API token. So you can press the button and you can have your Hadoop cluster in the digital ocean as we did here. So I do appreciate for your, uh, for your patience. So you can contact me via LinkedIn and my email, and you can clone the, my project in GitHub as well. Thank you very much. So oh, you need this? Yeah. Okay, so I can... Get to questions. We received a few. Uh -huh. okay. So what are your thoughts about Ansible versus Salt? Oh, as I said, I only used Ansible so far. Actually, this is also my first job, so I'm experiment, uh, experimenting everything. And this is what I learned with Ansible and what I tried and what I wanted to share with you today. So I don't know about salt, so I just wanted to highlight some good thing about Ansible here. <laughs> Uh, has talked to people who had bad experience uh, uh -huh. with performance with Ansible when scaled beyond a certain number of machines. So what's mm -hmm. your experience with that? 
In my project, I didn't get any, of course, I didn't experience with the scalability, but uh, at my workplace, we, o we also use Ansible and the Puppet as well, actually, together. And so far, I don't have any bad experience with Ansible. And well, I have a very uh, short uh, history with Ansible, but I cannot really tell any story about a uh, negative story or any bad story with you today. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. Uh, huh? So the next one is, uh, do you think Ansible has enough modules to perform regular deployment jobs? Yeah, I think, yeah, Ansible has. I mean, it also has, uh, for example, OpenStack, for OpenStack, for Amazon as well. So you can also try to create your cloud or create your servers in the Amazon Web Service, uh, Amazon Cloud, or also in OpenStack. I just used DigitalOcean. For example, DigitalOcean was not a core module before. So after this 2.0, they include this DigitalOcean module as a core module. And I think this is kind of sign that they are, it is growing and growing every day. So, so far I'm, I'm, I had enough modules to try my thing. Yeah. No? Okay. So, uh, so very nice design of presentation. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> And uh, so could you compare using configuration management software like uh, Ansible to using functional Linux distributions like uh, Nix OS? Or oh, actually I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> using functional, no, I cannot compare actually, yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's get to the last one. Uh, do you think that Ansible is suitable as a means for distributing or installing a project, not necessarily in a distributed manner, environment? Um, I think it's suitable. <laughs> it's, a, it's a short answer, but... Um, for example, as I mean, as far as I experienced, for example, I also used ad hoc command. Ansible has ad hoc command that, uh, for example, if, if you have just servers and you want to shut them down, for example, if you have like 50 servers and you don't really need to re uh, write a long uh, playbook or something, you can just run one command in your local machine to shut down all these 50 servers. So this is a head ad hoc command. And this is what I experienced so far, that I don't need to deploy an a environment or something. So I think you can also use in in this manner as well. But yeah, this is what I experienced so far. Good. Okay. So yeah, we have time for, for another question. So uh, you've used several modules during presentation. Did you write uh, some by yourself? Nope. I didn't write them. So for example, for installing some libraries, I Ansible has a, as, as a module for installing libraries. And what does I use for, the I also said this template module. For example, for creating directories, it has file module. It can create directory or it can create files. And you can even give some spe specification for the group, for the owner, or some file permission. And for example, for unarchive Hadoop, I also use the Ansible module. It has own unarchive module. And in this project, I really didn't need any kind of additional module uh, so far. But uh, this is not in the best shape now. So there are still some things that I want to improve. Maybe in that point, I will, I will realize some modules does not exist yet, so I can write my own module. But at my workplace, actually, we write some own module and use it, so I know how easy it is to, to make it. But in this project, I do not need to write my own module in, in, in anywhere. 